Science Ranger Melissa. Welcome to our first Glacier Science video of the season. And thanks for joining us for season two of the Glacier Science video series. I'm so excited to be here today. I'm standing in front of a historic building here in Glacier in the North Fork part of the park. And today we're gonna talk about historic buildings, their significance, why they're important, why the Park Service protects them. But before we do, I wanna explain a little bit. This area right here today, it's a spring day. Weather is all over the map. We've got clouds rolling in and some serious weather is starting up tomorrow. And I'm in a big prairie, but it is surrounded by lots of different trees as well. Today, I'm gonna get some help figuring out what happened at this site, as well as some other historic buildings in the park with, from our historical architect, Kim Hyatt. Now, Kim has worked in the historical architecture field for many years. He started off as his own private business of working in this field, but then moved on to work at Bryce Canyon National Park and then in the Intermountain Regional Office. So we're excited to meet with him today to learn more. Hey, Kim, how are you today? Grand. Good thank morning. you. Yeah, thank you for meeting us here today. We're excited to learn more about the historic buildings in the park. What are we what are we looking at today? This is the Margaret McCarthy cabin. Margaret and her husband uh, Jeremiah moved here in with their five children in 1908. And shortly after in that, that fall, Jeremiah passed away. Margaret was here by herself mm -hmm. in this environment raising those five children. Uh, it was a two-day grueling journey from uh. Uh, West Glacier, or what was then Belton, okay. just to get here. So you can imagine they were really isolated. On and, horses, right? I mean, they would, they were on yeah, horses. Of course, yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, they were isolated in this gorgeous country, but there was a community of homesteaders centered in Big, Big Prairie. Later, there was a post office, a store, they even held dances. Mrs. McCarthy was an active member of the North Fork community for almost 25 years. This is just a, a one-room cabin. It's about 15 feet by 20 feet. And as you can see, all out of uh, native logs. Uh, but there's a feature around here on the side I'd like to show you. I'd like to point out this. Oh, my. Well, that's just out of nowhere, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, now, imagine this family, they've got, they, they built a log house. And yet they want to have some modern features and, and, and landscaping. decorate the landscape a little bit. Yep. To me, that speaks as a, uh, of a family that intended to stay here and, and make something of this place. They could have just planted rocks in dirt and accomplished pretty much you know, the same thing if they just wanted a path. Right. But you know, they spent the money and hauled in the cement. Uh, the stones have been dressed a little bit, so it's a flat surface. There's some steps off that direction. This is what I really like about, about buildings like this. It, there's a bit of mystery here, and it's always a little bit of a... Detective work? Exactly. Okay. To determine, you know, what was the story behind all yeah. this? We may never know the full story. I love piecing it together. That, so that seems like it would be a big part of your job. It is indeed. And one of the reasons I just love what I do. Yeah, and then just looking at the building, you could get a sense of the people and why they came here and what they were doing and maybe trying to accomplish. It sounds like just all of that you can kind of see with the information you have and your knowledge of it. I, I just love the detective work that, that it takes to determine the, the story behind these buildings. We, we know from historical records and research that this concrete landing is from additions uh, for a kitchen and a porch that were uh, added to the cabin in the 1950s and 60s. And they were removed in the early 2000s as, as part of an historic preservation project. And that's pretty typical that preservation work occurs? Exactly. Uh, that is um, all we can do with some of our historic buildings because if we, if we have no use for them and don't at least maintain them, then they fall into disrepair and become a ruin. May still be interesting, but they've lost a lot of uh, the story that they could have otherwise told us. So we preserve even a building like this. We have no use for it right now, other than as an, an historic resource to demonstrate to visitors what it may have been like here 100 plus years ago. Yeah. There, there are some other things that I've noticed around this homestead. Um, I'm looking at, you know, these items. And I know that like, it's really easy to want to touch everything and even like sometimes pick it up, take it. 
but I know how important it is not to do that because all of this is, is part of the story here. So what, what, do you, um, what do you tell people when they go to a historic site and what they should be doing and not doing? Well, you're absolutely right. Just like we tell people in, uh, in wilderness, um, take photographs and leave nothing but footprints. These artifacts also have a story to tell us. Archaeological excavations helped us learn more about what was constructed at the site and when. And, and thanks to some of these objects, we, we know that there was plumbing and propane heat here. And we know that there used to be more buildings that were lost in a fire. So there's a lot, to, a lot yet that we can learn about, yeah. about this site, about the way the family lived. We have so many resources to care for. Okay. Just here at Glacier National Park, we have over 700 historic structures. Wow, 700. All of which require some degree of of preservation effort, uh, documentation. Some of them, unfortunately, are ruins, but for the most part, these are structures that that uh, um, are being used, mm -hmm. even back backcountry uh, ranger cabins, for example, to uh, to our uh, historic uh, headquarters building. And it takes it takes time, it takes people, it does take money. Congress has helped with that recently, but it it will take it would take a lot more. To, to do what we would like to do with everything. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And I can see that this is probably not a priority compared to some of these other buildings that we're utilizing and still actually living in or, or working in. And that's a good point. Yeah, there's a lot that could be learned here. As long as it's not disturbed, you know, in five, 10 years, we could come back and probably not have lost anything. Unlock the story, still exactly. be the detective. Yes, thank you. Awesome, okay. I was kind of curious about some of the other historic buildings in the park, so maybe would you mind sticking with us and just showing us maybe one or, or two more today? Let's go. Awesome. All right, we made it to the Apgar Village, and I know there's a lot of historic buildings in this area of the park, and I'm just kind of, you know, it's so different, though, than what we just saw up at the North Fork. It seems like a lot of differences in those buildings. Some of it is, is just because of the age, uh, different use. Um, you know, most people can get behind preserving something like uh, Sperry mm. Chalet, oh, for example. Yeah. You know, everyone knows those buildings. Yep. But I'm more interested in those that, that have a more subtle story to tell, that really tell the stories of everyday people and everyday life. And we have a lot of examples of those in the park, things that you yeah. wouldn't think of as a historic resource that should be preserved, such as what we have behind what us here. What is, what? The Comfort Station's historic <laughs> camp? Where we go to the bathroom? In, indeed, <laughs> indeed. This dates to the period of construction in the Park Service known as Mission 66. Oh the my The 10-year effort from uh, the mid-50s to the mid-60s to improve facilities in the Park Service. By definition, anything over 50 years old is historic. 50 years. We're required by the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966 to preserve those resources. Okay. Unless we determine that they are not necessary or not significant enough to, to warrant that. In in this case, this contributes to a historic right, environment. Right here, yeah. Indeed. And I just used it, so it's <laughs> functional as well. <laughs> that's the important part. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. So, um, and you said this was like 1960s it was built? 1960s, that, Around that there. Mission 66 okay. period. We have okay. numerous examples throughout the park well, throughout the Park Service. Yeah. But uh, believe it or not, here we have representative examples of three different types of comfort stations built in the 1960s that you'll see throughout the park, throughout the country at different national parks. Well, now I need to check them off on my list. <laughs> I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you a cheat sheet. You yeah. can find each style. All right. Thank you so much, Kim, for being with us today. I sure learned a lot about historic buildings here in Glacier National Park, but also just the importance of historic buildings to all of our national parks, as well as our country. And it's just great to know that we're protecting and preserving these uh, for future people to know about. They're not museum pieces, they're to be used. They become part of our continuing national story. Yeah, and I'm looking for it. I'll maybe someday when I'm older, I'm not gonna say old, but older, I'll come back and I'll reuse this. At so, least you'll appreciate <laughs> it more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Thanks again, everybody. Thanks again, Kim. Thanks for joining us. And stay tuned because we've got a lot of more. Uh, this summer, we have a lot more great science video is on the way. And I know you're going to enjoy them. So stick with us. We'll see you again next time. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Goodbye.